Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this and the next five videos, I'm going to show you how to make a reusable grid component like this in Swing. So I can click on it and set the states of cells here. And you can configure what states each cell has. So you can change the background color and the foreground color and whether a character appears on it or not at all. And the idea is that you can use this for things like creating Minesweeper clones or doing cellular automata simulations. In this particular video, we're just going to get started by creating a kind of Hello World Java Swing program. And by the end of all six videos, you'll have one of these components that you can use in your own projects if you want. Along the way, we're going to be looking at, of course, drawing in Swing and dealing with mouse events and the observer pattern and some other things as well. So let's start by creating a new Java project here in Eclipse. I'm going to go to File, New Java Project, and we'll call it Grid Component. And you can leave this Create Module Info Java file ticked if you want. Let's click Finish there. And I'm going to right-click the project and go to New Class, and we'll create a class called App, which is going to be where we put our main method. So let's tick this to say we want a main method in there. And also, actually, I don't want to put that in a default package. So let's say package. I'll just use my initials JWP. And then we can just click this error and go to move app.java to package JWP. So now we've got this app.java in a package called JWP. I'm going to right click the JWP package and go to new class. And we'll create a class called main frame and click finish. This is going to be our main window. So we'll say extends J frame. And now we have to go into module info.java if we've created one, otherwise you don't have to bother and say requires java.desktop. Let's save that. And then we should be able to in mainframe.java import J frame. And then I can click this and say add default serial version ID, which is just a warning, but it's just annoying. So let's get rid of it. And that just has to do with serialization, which we're not going to use. I'm going to right click and go to source, generate constructor using fields to automatically generate a constructor. And we'll get rid of this call to super, which we don't need because we're not going to use it. Uh, you can use it actually to put a kind of name on the mainframe if you want, but I'll just get rid of it, I think. Now, to actually make mainframe display, the most important thing is to say set visible and set that to true. Otherwise, it will be an invisible window, which you can't see. But there are a couple of other important things as well. We need to say that it's going to start maximized or else set the size, really, or set some kind of, you know, tell it to appear as something other than zero size somehow. So let's do set size. It's perhaps the easiest option. And I'll set this to maybe, I'll try 800 by 800. We've got a, quite a big monitor here. So you can set it to whatever size is best for your monitor. And we also want to do set default close operation and do put a constant in there. Exit on close, which is a constant from the JFrame class. And what this does is it makes it so that when you close your window, that will exit your application. So it will finish the swing event loop. It's checking for events and updating the screen. It will just make that finish. And that's what we want normally. So if we go back to app.java, we need to fire up a swing thread in a recommended way, which is by doing swing utilities dot invoke later. And we can supply just a method reference to main frame constructor in here. So main frame colon colon new. And if I run that, we've already now got a minimal swing application, kind of a hello world swing application. So actually, let's, let's maybe put the call to super back in there. So if I want to name my application, I can just put it in uh, as an argument to super. I could call this grid component, for example. And if we run that now, now we can see that it's named grid component. 
uh, but that's probably not too important for our purposes here. So all the action of this program that we, we are going to create is largely going to happen in a single file, which is going to basically implement this grid component. So I'm going to right click the package here and go to new class and we'll call this grid panel. And that is going to extend J panel. Now we have to go through a kind of sim similar rigmarole again. I've got to add the import for that. Command Shift O or Control Shift O on Windows and add the serial version ID just to get rid of that annoying warning. And then right click and go to source generate constructor using fields like this and I'll leave the call to super in this time because it actually you know what no I won't I'll get rid of it because we don't need it come to think of it okay so so we can see the panel well let's first of all go to mainframe.java and if I've only got one component that I want to display in my mainframe then I can set that component as the content pane. So I can do set content pane, and that's the actual bit of the window um, that's actually actually contains the components you add to it. Let's do set content pane, new grid panel. So the entire interior of the JFrame will be set up by my grid panel. Now when you run that, I don't think you can really tell that I've added a panel there, but what we can do is go to grid panel and in the constructor, I can say set background. Let's set that to color dot black. And now when we fire this up, if I add the import for color at least, we should see that it's now black. I always think there's something kind of exciting about just seeing a blackness uh, within a frame like this because it, you know, it suggests some kind of game is going to start or we're going to do some interesting graphics or something. I just associate it with computer games, some early 90s computer games. Okay, so now let's look at how we actually draw on a panel. The thing to do is let's go to, let's right click and go to source, override implement methods. And we want to override a method from J component. And that method is called paint. So if I go down here somewhere, I should be able to find it. It's this one here, paint. Let's click OK and we'll leave the core to super in. So the way this works is in app.java, we're starting off up this swing thread uh, and that's, that's going to be continually running. There's going to be an event loop in there somewhere which continually checks to see if the user has done anything and then it's going to update the components on the screen uh, as and when necessary. So that's going to be running continuously. And one of the things that's going to happen is somewhere down the line, this paint method is going to get called. And it's the paint method that JPanel will use to do things like set background. It's actually going to draw in that paint method uh, to do to update its interior. It's, there's also like a paint components method that's going to get called if you've got sub components in there that have to be drawn. So all that stuff's getting called by code that we don't see, but that code exists. It's part of Swing and it's being invoked by the event loop. Uh, it's just that it, we don't see it ourselves, but it is there. That code exists. It calls paint. We never call paint directly ourselves. Uh, we want that to be called automatically by the, ultimately by the event loop. But if we override paint, we can do our own painting in there. And what you usually do is you, create a uh, variable of the type graphics2d and let's call that g2 and set that equal to and all we have to do is cast g to a graphics2d. The reason for this are kind of historical. Let's add the import for that. So this thing is of type graphics2d uh, not of the older type graphics. So graphics2d has more functionality than just plain old graphics, uh, but for historical reasons, I guess they didn't want to change the header of this method. It sort of comes through as a graphics, which we have to cast to what it actually is to uh, be able to use the kind of newer enhanced functionality. So now we can do things like, uh, if we want to draw a line, we'll just say draw line. You can see we've got 
uh, X and Y start components and X and Y end components. So for example, let's go from zero, ignore that, that's been filled in automatically, but it's all ridiculous. It's just trying to fill in something that it thinks we might want to use. And uh, let's go to like 600, the opposite corner like this. And to determine the color of this, we need to say g2.setColor and uh, we can make it red, so color.red, for example. And if we run this, we'll get a line like that. So yeah, how big did I, did I actually make this? I actually made it 800 by 800, so that's why it doesn't go all the way to the corner. I'd have to put 800 and 800 in here. So now let's try drawing a rectangle. I'm going to change this to draw rect. And let's get rid of that stuff and use autocomplete so I can see this uh, pop-up API information. So this says, yeah, we've got uh, the coordinates of, it's basically the top left corner of the rectangle, and then we've got its width and its height. So let's say that we want to create a rectangle at the position 10, 10. So that's really close to the top left corner because uh, the Y coordinate actually um, starts with zero at the top and then the maximum value is at the bottom slightly confusingly but if you're used to doing if you're used to computer graphics you'll be used to that and the x coordinate goes from left to right so the low value is at, at left zero is at left the maximum value is at right and for the width and the height let's have something like 100 and 100 take a look at that so that gives us a rectangle and you can see it's not filled in it's uh, it's just a square in this case. And if we want to fill it in, we need to use fill rect like, like this. Let's do fill rect. And now we get a filled rectangle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a private static final int cell size. And I'm going to set that to maybe 30, something fairly small. And what I want to do in the subsequent videos in this little mini series is I want to fill the screen with these squares, which are going to have a 30 by 30 size instead of 100 by 100. So I want to fill it with a grid of these squares. We'll have a margin around the edge that will just be gray or something. And then we'll have a kind of area that is maybe I don't know, black or whatever, or white or whatever color seems best for the grid lines. And then we're going to fill that area with as many of these cells as possible in a grid. So they're going to not quite touch each other. And that's going to allow us to see the background behind them. And that'll look like we've got grid lines appearing uh, between the different cells and around them. An alternative approach would be to just use draw line and to draw a grid of lines. Uh, but I, I quite like this idea of just drawing the squares on the grid and then all you've got to do is draw the background, make sure the squares don't touch and then you can kind of see set of intersecting grid lines that are defined by the spaces between the squares. So that's going to take some heavy arithmetic and uh, we're going to tackle that in the next video. And just a reminder that if you go to caveaprogramming.com, among uh, many other courses on here. I've also got a course on Java Swing. So Java Swing, GUI programming from beginner to expert. And GUI is the, the way everyone says it. It's quite s silly if you ask me. should be GUI, but that is a bit of a mouthful. So everyone says GUI. That stands for Graphical User Interface. And there are lots of other courses on here as well. So I do hope you will consider checking those out. So until next time, happy coding.